to see all of you soon at the end of September. Thank you so much for being part of this class. I can't wait to just get to spend five days with you. And thank you for hanging in there with us during this kind of weird time of trying to figure out in person, trying to figure out online. So we're just really grateful that you're hanging in there with us. Um, so I just wanted to make this little video because sometimes we are visual learners and sometimes it's just nice to see. So I wanted to let you know, you are going to be getting a tube in the mail with your print, as you know. Um, for those of you that are in town, you can contact Peggy Townsend about picking up your print. There's only like three of you in there um, to pick up when, when works for her and for you. And um, so you're gonna be getting your print in a tube. And I went to five different places looking for normal tubes, normal mailing tubes. Um, no po post office or staples seem to have them. Um, so I ended up at UPS and these are very specific types of tubes. And I apologize right now, the guy told me they were great and I'm not a huge fan of them, I can already tell. Um, so you're gonna get it and it's gonna have this little swirly cap. There's no tape, there's, no, there's nothing holding it in except for this cap. But the weird thing is, is it's got these little notches and it's a, it does have instructions on it, but I found that when I did it myself, it wasn't super natural. So I just thought I'd walk you through it. Um, so you're gonna twist and you have to really kind of push as you twist, not push down, but the twist itself is kind of hard. And then you have to kind of pull. So um, it doesn't feel super natural. It feels like you're doing something wrong kind of with it. Some of you might not have any problem with this. I found like, okay, am I breaking this? So if you have arthritis in your hands as well, I apologize. These are not super friendly for arthritic hands. It may take you a second or you may wanna get somebody to help you. Like I said, who knew that during a pandemic, mailing tubes would be a thing that you couldn't find, but apparently they are. Um, so you're gonna get that, you're gonna get your print, which this is the print I'm gonna be using during our class. And all I did was I just mounted it onto a piece of cardboard. Super easy, just with a little bit of painter's tape. And I like to have that so that if I need to move it around or kind of get it out of the way, whatever, it's really easy. If you don't have cardboard or like, don't go to the store for this, um, you can just mount it to your wall. Um, that's kind of not that that hard. We're not going to be so literal with these all the time. So I want you to feel kind of free to move it around. But I like to kind of just have it so that I can kick it around. It also protects the print itself. So, but these are your prints. You do whatever you want with them. We will be drawing a little bit on them. We're going to be making plumb lines just to kind of see where things land. Um, and we're also going to be working same size format. So this is something that's called side size. It, it is um, a technique that just means like you literally go straight across. You do not have to do it that way. I am not some kind of sight size fanatic. I find it's nice and easy to kind of work like if there's a problem in the painting, but I will change a lot of things as I'm working. But when we work, you're gonna have your print somewhere, you're gonna have your panel, and they should be about the same, they should be the same size, um, unless I've talked to you about something different. So you've got that. Um, that kind of brings me to the panels themselves. So if you've got a linen or a canvas or a wooden panel, whatever you got to the size that you, that, you know, we had talked about, um, you want to prime it and you want to prime it a kind of a gray value. So this can be like black and white oil. It can be, you can add a little warmth to it with some ochre or like even an umber would work. It'll kind of warm it up a little bit. It's up to you, but you want about this value. You don't want a lot darker. If you've already primed it and you've gone darker, it's okay. Or if you've gone lighter, it's okay. <laughs> All of this gets covered up, so please don't freak out about this part. This is just a little mini tutorial. I kind of scrub mine on. I don't have my panel yet that's the same size. I'm ordering it. Um, and if you ordered a panel that says oil primed, you know, it's probably a little more expensive. They tend to be a little fancier. You have to do this part in oil. You, if you start with oil, you gotta stay with oil, okay? Great, wonderful. The only thing about oil is it takes a long time to dry, that we all know that. So you wanna prime this as soon as you can. Like the longer that this has to dry, the better for the class. Max, you, or excuse me, minimum, you need two weeks for this to dry, truly, because we're gonna be turping things and moving things. And if it's just like kind of dry, it's not gonna work very well. 
if you are having a hard time getting your art supplies, because I know several people are, um, that it can be kind of tricky right now. Shipping is nuts. Like we're just here we are, right? Um, and it, your panel arrives to you maybe later and it gets really close to when we're going to start. Skip the oil unless you oil unless you ordered an oil primed panel and then just stick to white. Don't even bother putting something on it. Um, this is for if it's coming like a few days before our class. If it's acrylic primed, which most things are unless you're paying for an oil prime, it will say, if it's acrylic prime, just get yourself either a tube of acrylic gray or black and white acrylic or even black acrylic mixed with gesso. All those will work. And just put a layer of this on, real scratchy, kind of washy a little bit. It will, um, it just helps like not work into the white. And just let that dry, it's no big deal. The nice thing about working with acrylic, an acrylic um, base, like a prime, is you can work with acrylic paints to dry, to, excuse me, to draw with it. So, up to you. <laughs> I tend to put an acrylic prime and then I will sketch a little bit with acrylic paints. Don't freak out. If you're in oils, wonderful. That was not, no acrylics were on the list. So don't worry about this part. But if you kind of have some, so a lot of people have a couple of acrylics kicking around and they don't really care which way it goes. It is kind of fun to put that acrylic layer down and then draw with acrylic so that you kind of lock in a little bit of the drawing at the beginning and you don't really have to worry about it. I am probably going to do that. I'm not sure yet. Again, if you don't have acrylics, if you've already gone to oils, if you have an oil prime, like if you're just in oiled mode, wonderful. All of this is about a half an hour's worth of instruction. So no big deal, right? I will meet you where you are. Oil, acrylic, it doesn't matter, okay? And the last thing, well, second to last thing, is that a few people asked me about these um, in the last email that I sent about these sort of sleeves, right? These are just those sleeves you can find at like Staples or wherever, maybe you have some. Don't order these, you don't have to, you don't need them, but I was gonna show you why I like them so much so that if you find something else in your house that works better, like a clear plastic plate, or if you have those old transparencies um, for overhead projectors, or I don't think saran wrap would work. Um, it does need to have a little bit of kind of not so floppy. Um, even a piece of plexiglass works great. But what I do sometimes with this, so say on this print, I wanted to add a couple balloons and I didn't know where, I could just paint onto my plastic and then just kind of see, you know, I can kind of move it around and see, whoops, I have a little white on there. Um, I can just kind of see like, hey, maybe I wanted a little bit, you know, a lot bigger. And I'm not like, if I'm not touching the print and I'm also not touching my painting. So you could do this on your painting too and just kind of move it around, you know? And that can be a really nice thing to play with. And then you can just wipe it off and use it again. So really efficient um, and very, very inexpensive too. The last thing tool wise that I was going to say is, um, grab this. I really love these if you have tape, Tape works great too, but sometimes there's like some straight lines. Some of you have straight lines in your in your prints and stuff. So I like these clear um, triangles because you can see what you're doing, like where your line is. If you don't have one of these, don't worry about it. You just use some tape. Um, painter's tape is best for painting. You don't really want to use like any kind of um, duct tape or anything like that, or even scotch tape doesn't really work very well. So, but I like doing this because then I can kind of look and see kind of what the angles are and stuff. So I think that's it. That's all I've got. Um, please feel free to email Peggy or I any problems that you're having or questions you have about materials. Please don't freak out about the oil acrylic thing. That's like, so not a big deal. It's just the beginning of the class. And, um, Hopefully you can familiarize yourself with Google Drive and Zoom. If you're not familiar with that, please let us know. I, pro I may do a little tutorial and upload it to YouTube as well, just for people who aren't used to either of those programs, just so you don't feel like the first day is the first time you're using them. So familiarize with yourself with those. They're super um, user-friendly for the most part. And um, 
I can't wait to virtually see you at the end of September. Thank you so, so much. And I look forward to talking to all of you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or Peggy Townsend. Thank you.